In this video, we're talking about what you need to do to clear the ride of the Valkyrie milestone event going on right now, the confusing new business model of Scopely, and we got early access to the Morgan Le Fay's Scourge Saga event. That and it is Monday, so we got all of your questions from the Mailbag Valley Club, so if you're ready for all of that, you know what to do. Find that like button, and let's go smash it. Valley Flyer. Hello, Valley Club. What is up? I am Valley Flying. Welcome back to the Valley Flying channel. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you had a great weekend. And if this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button for more Marvel Strike Force content. Beginners, mid game players, late game players, whatever. We talk about it all on this channel. And if you are back, from and previously subscribed, welcome back. In this video, we have a lot to discuss. We're talking about what you need to do to clear this Valkyrie event going on right now. The confusing new business model for Scopely. Why are they not putting offers? Why are they not letting complete these events by grinding? We have early access to the Morgan Face Scott Saga event, and we got all your questions from the mailbag. And I want to thank each and every one of you that are a member of Discord that left the mailbag question there in the mailbag channel. But Little housekeeping notes before we uh, move on to these uh, these uh, Valkyrie event. Going on vacation this week with the family, so we may not get all five of those videos out this week, but we will be back to normal next week. Uh, so if you don't see the weekly news update, I'm gonna try to get that out, but if you don't see that because we get a little busy with the vacation, that is why. Same thing with the uh, live stream on YouTube, reacting to the blog post, the Friday blog post. So we're gonna try to get as many videos out, but if some of them are missing, that is why. But with that said, let's get right into this Valkyrie event. We have two milestones showing up in the game right now. One is Avenging Asgard, and for this, you're gonna need to blitz, and you get even more points if you're using your Asgardians, geared up Asgardians in this event. Now, uh, pretty easy if you don't even, if even if you don't have those Asgardians fully built up. It uh, probably about four blitz rotations per day. If you have this as guardians built up, it's gonna take a lot less to get through this. But total for this, you're gonna get 58,000 of these uh, Valhalla orb fragments, which is gonna lead to the next milestone there. A uh, little different than was described in the blog post though. If we look at the blog post, it does say that to completing the first 20 Avenging Asgard milestones will give us enough silver face bits to purchase Valkyrie's costumes on the costume store. But if we go back in game and see what it actually is, uh, is at milestone 20, there is nothing there. So you actually have to complete all of these milestones. You're gonna get it at the end of the event. The final 25 are right there. So a little misleading as far as the blog post, but as we know, they put that little blurb in there that everything in the blog post is subject to change to kind of, uh, protect them in case something like this happens. All right, and that is leading to this big one here, the Ride of the Valkyrie milestones. Now to get that, not only will you need to do these Avenging Asgard milestones, you're gonna need to do some arena, arena battles and claim a lot of these web milestones here. If we look at these web milestones, uh, you'll see that uh, to get these web milestones, you need to win or lose or lose an arena battle, which is good. It's not just winning, you could lose also, but when calculating this, you're gonna to need to do six arena battles per day, which means that uh, you're not gonna be able to do this without spending power cores. Now the power cores that you do need to spend for this, it's not a lot. If you wanna do an, an, an extra arena battle, it's gonna cost 25 extra cores, which is less core spending than we've had to do to complete some previous events. But this is the first time that we've had to spend a core in arena, so it doesn't feel good. Now, with all of that said, the big milestones are here in this Rally of the Valkyrie event here, and you're gonna need to get a lot of points. You're gonna to need to get all the way to milestone 27, 104,000 points for all of this, uh, to get all of these uh, relay circuits for this Techno Future milestone. If you wanna get all of the milestones, you're gonna to need to get 140,000 and you're gonna to need to buy some of these uh, orb fragments there in order to get that. But if you wanna do this free to play, assuming that these web milestones are gonna run concurrently for seven days, you're gonna get 110,000 points 
points free to play if you do all your blitz battles and you do those six arena battles per day now if you're someone like that was unlike myself and managed to save your arena battles and done all this well you can with the overlap with when the daily reset happens when these uh when the web milestones go live and when you actually get your five arena battle currency well, you could have actually done all that and saved it. So you actually would only need to do one arena refresh. But if you're not like myself, or if you are like myself and didn't save all your battles, you'll probably have to do a few of those refreshes. But considering what we get for this, I don't think it's a uh, bad value core per what we get value, but it does it doesn't feel good for, uh, for all this stuff for... Um, events that we pretty previously didn't have to spend to do arena battles all right let's talk about the event that just ended though the summer of thunder milestones now if you look at where i ended i was just short those 300 points we had two days to get those extra 300 mjolnir fragments and on both of those days nothing happened which is trashy now if we look at uh, what was this is this is what the store looked like on that final day here uh, there was an offer here, no one core offer right here, which which didn't feel good. I wanted to complete all that, uh, all the milestones. I grinded all month. I have uh, spent cores to complete other events in this. And I guess we did get all the milestones because of that bug that gave it to out every to everyone for free. I would have liked to get it a second time by grinding though, which is what was uh, which was the original design. Now, if you guys don't remember, there was a bug in one of the milestones opening those lines of lightning orbs. Well, that would not uh, that was not completable unless you got the bug. And in that instance as well, just like with this. There was no offer so yes you could not complete the event if you were uh, if you were trying to grind and not purchase any offers but if you waited to the last day to see what they were going to do if they were going to do a one core offer or if they would uh, give us the final milestones to complete those lines of lightning uh, milestone orbs from the previous summer of thunder milestones well uh, if you waited till the last day, there was no way to purchase this either. So uh, they're giving us the fear of missing out. And and when we want to purchase it, they could have got some sales, but they're saying, no, we're not going to, you're not going to even be able to complete this if you want to spend money. So very interesting business model. I'm not sure why they're doing this. And I hope this was done in this trashy way because they gave us the milestones originally. Uh, the first time so I hope that's not what they do with these techno future milestones it did not feel uh, it did not feel good to be that close to those milestones and them not to put out a uh, offer for those cores just uh, not very good all right next thing I want to discuss is the Morgan Le Fay sagas right now so the way to access that if you go into your raid store right now and uh, this, you should be able to get this uh, in just a few short hours if you did not get the early access. And it's not really a big thing that you get because it's, you get only first time clear rewards. So you're, 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 uh, if you are getting access to this, you're not getting a huge advantage here. So if we go to open orbs and you have no orbs, you can click find. And if you click all the way down here, you see these hard, the Morgan Le Fay one to five. We've already done a few of these and they're pretty easy if you have your dark hole built up. Uh, pretty much just autoing through those first four nodes. Let's try this one right here and uh, show you the uh, some of these enemies. If you have not already accessed this, this was out since the server reset of last night. You could go in here and do this. And it's, uh, it's a pretty easy event with some pretty good rewards. There's only five Five of these nodes so keep that in mind and the fifth node has some really really good rewards now um there are some that say you can access the second difficulty through this teal gear but uh i've also heard that uh, they were unable to actually start the event when they went that route so uh it is in there if you want to try this now for those first time rewards for a few hours earlier than everyone else then you can but um yeah, it's uh, it's live right now, and I like this. It looks like we're gonna need to gear them up a lot in order to get that costume and in order to get those awakened abilities. But the good thing is, it looks like those awakened abilities will only uh, extend the um, additional buffs that extend to their team. So, for example, Morgan Lefay, her buffs extend to the Dark Hole team. If you want to extend to those Horsemen and Apocalypse, that is where those awakened abilities uh, will come into play. So that is. Uh, 
That is where you could get that stuff right now and go into this. Now, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is the, the gear 13 pieces in those elites. It looks like they removed the five X drop on the gear 13s. I'm not sure if this was intentional or if this is a bug. Looks like it's now capped on one. You are guaranteed a unique from the right or, but, uh, but yeah, instead of one, uh, instead of five, it's now one. And it looks like you used to be getting drop five drops of uniques and 20 drops of catalysts, but it looks like the uh, uniques, the catalysts were all uh, nerfed as well. So the, that particular orb, not as good as it once was just a few days ago, or uh, I guess yesterday. So beware, uh, it may be a bug. It may be have been nerfed. There's a lot of stealth buffs and stealth nerfs that were not communicated in this event. So it's unclear at this point where it is and the devs have not answered any questions in the Envoy server yet about this. And while we can access the normal difficulty for the Morgan Le Fay saga, if we go into these armories 16 orbs to try to access the next difficulty, uh, it says that it is locked. So you can get some catalyst and some other first time rewards for that normal difficulty right now. But if you're trying to get some Wiccan abilities or something that can actually benefit your Morgan Le Fay, you can't do that right now. So a uh, little sneak preview, but it should go live in a few short hours for everybody in the official way. So not a, not a huge deal if you're getting it and not a huge deal if you're missing it. So this is a bug that they left in there, which was fine either way. All right, but let's go on to your questions from the Mailbag Valley Club with ISO uh, four out of five on your horseman teams being a requirement for Apocalypse and given its scarcity. So I guess you're talking about ISO eight blue uh, level four for all of your horsemen. Would it be better to see which ISO eight each horseman would be on their team when paired with Apocalypse? Or do you think we should do which ISO is best on their individual horseman teams and switch it later if we need it? I think you stick with what you need right now for your individual horseman teams. Uh, for we, we may get more access to this ISO 8 level 4 blue ions in the future, but uh, as of right now, it is very scarce. So I'd say right now, put all your ISO 8 level 3 or blue level 3 on all your characters. Wait in the 4s because Apocalypse is not coming for a while. Apocalypse, like I've been saying, at the soonest we're going to get him in the game, at least uh, his unlock is going to be December, but it's probably going to be later than that. So you won't need to switch uh, your stuff then. So do what do what you need for your teams right now. And then uh, hopefully down the road, they'll make that ISO 8 4 a little more farmable so we could switch back and forth between our characters. But yeah, do do right now is what I would recommend. That's what I'm doing. And uh, but I'm also not putting any level four on these characters, except if it's a character like a Morgan Le Fay or Rogue or certain characters. But most the rest of the team, I'm not uh, gearing them up past level three right now. All right, greetings, Britta. Do you think what the, the impl implementations of the sagas in this shift to focusing largely on horseman teams? that the previous meta teams, i.e. Axemen, will fall by the wayside of the Horseman Mutant Team Unlimited. They already, they already are falling. If you try Doom 2.3 or Doom 3.0, excuse me, very, very difficult. And uh, some of our previous teams that used to work in those raids are, are, it's tougher for them. Basically, if I'm a newer player, should I even bother investing in Axemen when there's a Scourge Horseman team that I have to build that can do the same thing? Even have to build them a little higher to do it. So the conundrum you're in right now, in order to get your horseman team to the level that they need to be for this event or for the events for the next uh, for the next raid team that should replace them, you're going to need to put that gear on them and forget and to get that teal gear and all that stuff. You're going to need to do the raids and the solution right now in the mutant section of the raids unfortunately is the Axemen. Yes, they're falling down. Uh, yes, they're getting replaced by their teams. And you could sort of do hybrid teams with Rogue in there and Omega Red in there, but the Axemen are still, unfortunately, the best team. They should be replaced when Death's teams come out, if the rumors are true. But I, I still think at this point, with the with that Death team so far off, early, I'm, earliest I'm expecting Death himself is in November. We're probably going to get the team before that, in the patch before that in October. So... I think I think we're at a place right now that you're safe investing, but just know that within the next few months that team is going to fall off. But in order to get to that place that you can get the next team that the team is falling off for, you will need to do the current raid. So 
I, I think you still have to build some of the current teams right now. All right, so with the do new Doom 3 raid, do you think that Mutant will have a hybrid team since Rogue and Gambit are good together? Omega Red could be used since it's pretty great also. Do you think that skill would better get through it since I struggle with the 700k Secret Avengers, Kestrel, and Shang-Chi and Doom 2.0? Because of that, I'd have to change my strategy for saving my Sam ult for the Surfer Note to get a speed advantage. Just want to know what your thought is. Uh, I think that... For me, at least, in Doom uh, 3, I think we've done up with the difficulty 2. That skill team was pretty good. You do need to manage things a little better and possibly even using some sacrifice teams. I know my Kestrel gets one-shotted and I'm having to heal that or going with another character like a Gamora, another skill character that I could just finish off the node. But uh, yeah, Shang-Chi works very well. And I think on days that I get good RNG, we're able to finish that as far as skill. But as far as mutant, it is it is a problem. Now, Rogue, I don't see her being too much value other than one node. Same thing for Omega Red. Uh, their cooldowns, they're very, very good, but they're very front end loaded, which means that you're gonna get a lot of that, or a lot of their uh, the value of their kits in the early stages of battle. But because both of them have such long cooldowns, it's gonna be hard to use that ultimate from Omega Red twice. It's gonna be used, hard to use either of uh, Rogue's moves in uh, the raids twice because of the long cooldowns. But uh, they are a good solution right now. You could use them for one note. And I guess with the, the Rogue Gambit combination as well, they're good for uh, a node, maybe two. But I think Axemen are still the way to go. Kitty Pride and Iceman, you probably are the ones that's gonna uh, s switch them out. But I think you should be pretty confident right now, or at least because they'll be valuable for the next few months. Beast, Bishop, and Jubilee. Uh, but October, they should start to get a little more obsolete. All right. Hey, from El Paso, Texas, what is up from the DFW, my friend? I just beat Dark Dimension 4, Unlock Doom. At this point in the game, is it still a good idea to upgrade him, or is it strictly to focus on the Scourge characters and characters needed to unlock Scourge characters? Keep the great content. Appreciate all you do, and keep us informed. I try my best, my brother. So congratulations on unlocking Doom. He's still a very, very valuable character. I need him in a raid. So in, even in order to get my Scourge characters, I still would need Doom. And for those new challenges as well. We're going to talk about some of those challenges as well. Uh, Doom, there's, a, there's certain characters that even though they're not in Scourge that personally I would still invest in. If you're a little more struggling with resources, you may want to skip Doom if it's not going to screw you too much in the Doom raids. But... And Doom is one of them. Dormammu is another one of them. Uh, Omega Red is a non-Scourge character that I still may be investing in. So there's still a few characters. And uh, yeah, I, I, I would invest in Doom. But if you're limited resources, you may want to save it for the Scourge teams. Keep in mind that these Scourge, these Scourges and the Horsemen and all that... Again, December is the earliest that I'm expecting Apocalypse. So we do have time. You should start planning. You should start diverting some of your resources towards these uh, newer Horsemen and Scourge teams. But uh, I think there's still some characters such as Doom that are important enough that even though um, they're not required for Scourge or Apocalypse, then you should still invest. Now, with that said, Everybody up to gear tier 15, 16 is gear 16 is a little rare, and everyone up to ISO 8 blue level 3 should be fine. It's those characters with the 4 and 5 that you really gotta watch, and all your teal gear you need to watch as well. But I think you should have no, no issues building up to level 85 or even level 90, putting that gear 16 in him, and then, um, or gear 15, excuse me, and then getting up to ISO 8 blue level 3. You should be fine with Doom there, and that shouldn't interfere too much with your Scourge characters, uh, even, even with their training mats and things, given that it's such a long time frame uh, coming down that we should be expecting those characters. All right. Hey, Valley Flying, I've never asked a question before, but want to know if I'm the only one I think that Dark Dimension rewards should be reset after a certain amount of time, maybe a month, maybe it's a year. I don't know, I haven't touched GD1 or 2. I don't even know how long with that I'm done, and I'm done with DD3, DD4, and I'll probably never touch them again either. But they take a long time to complete, and the scope wants us to log in more hours. I know I would keep doing that over and over if there's incentive to, so... Uh, maybe take out the character shards, give us some gear and T4s, let me know what you think. I mean, this is this has been something that we've wanted for a while. 
Uh, this is what I thought Pocket Dimension was gonna be. I thought we would get this uh, every so often, and it's like, oh yes, we're replaying Dark Dimension with some new characters, and um, you know, there's some newer characters in there, or some diff different difficulties to make it more challenging. I thought that's what Pocket Dimension was gonna be, but we've had two Pocket Dimensions so far. Since the beginning of the year when, she was, when it was introduced, we've had two. We're in August right now, we're in the eighth month, and we have two Pocket Dimensions, so. Uh, I would like to see this come back. If the rewards are worth it, I would uh, take them in again. But the rewards need to be worth it because uh, it's not that fun going through these dark dimensions a uh, few more times. I'm trying to go through that right now for the border, and it's just uh, it's a long, long uh, trek through that thing. All right, but but to answer your question, yes, I would like to see more rewards to do this, but uh, as long as I don't uh, have to take too much time on a daily, on a maybe a monthly basis to do this, and I could do this when I want, uh, wouldn't be that bad, especially now that we're getting level 90, we're getting more gear, it should be able to clear through Dark Dimension 5 and some of these earlier Dark Dimensions even quicker than previous. All right, hey Valley Flying, since the last patch, I'm experiencing a loading bug. The loading screen impacting each mode freezes 260 bits, but the total I needed slowly increases. Uh, we got an update here, so yes, this is a bug looks like a uh, customer service they turn off to download wi-fi assets override wi-fi reboot it turn it on and it's working so far and then next update is attempting to delete and we reinstall wish me luck so anytime i've had issues like this where the game just doesn't load correctly uh, i think it has been related to this uh download all assets over wi-fi and things like that so uh i've done the same thing in the past i've del i've fully deleted the game from my phone and i have to reinstall it when the new update drops it's usually not one of these major passes like a 6.2 or 6.3 it's usually one of these 6.3.1 or something like that that uh i've had issues with so uh hopefully reinstalling deleting and reinstalling helps you just make sure that if you guys are Doing that, make sure you have your account linked to Facebook or something like that so that when you delete it from your phone or your device, it's not totally gone. So uh, just make sure you have your account linked and you should be fine. But I, I, I have had to do that in the past as well, my brother. Hey, Valley, who would you prioritize for the legendaries between Omega Red, Jubilee, Adam Warlock, and who would you re recommend for Mutant Gears for the Rogue event? All right, Omega Red is the best... Uh, traditional legendary in the game. I, I don't know if we're gonna get another traditional legendary, but Omega Red is the best after Rogue and Morgan Le Fay. Jubilee is still good and you kind of still need her for the mutant nodes right now. So kind of Jubilee by default. Uh, and then Adam Warlock. But I guess if we're looking at total value, what it would do for you in a game, now that I'm saying that in my head, Jubilee has a little more value than Omega Red because the Omega Red is great for war and is a better overall character, but Jubilee is kind of the default uh, choice for the mutant sections in Doom right now. So uh, Jubilee, just for that, I would give it a little more value. Then I would go Omega Red, and then Adam Warlock is uh, not as valuable as he was before. The Infinity Watch still does a lot of good stuff, but it's, it's, they're not all over the place like they were before, so... Uh, I would go a Jubilee, Omega Red, and Adam Warlock, but they're 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 better than Jubilee and some of these characters. All right, hey Valor, let's play a game. Rank these quality of life improvements and what you would want to come to the game most and least. All right, so auto blitz rotation button. This is a good one. Let's let's give that one a yellow. Removal of all raid uh, keys and starting a raid automatically every 24 hours. This is a really good one as well. I'm gonna go with that one in green. Switching Crucible format to play each opponent once a day, seven day long format. Uh, I don't know if I would like to do that seven days. I, I like, I probably want a little more than three days, but seven days, I don't know. I, I guess if the rewards are good, that would be good. But for now, I don't think this would be a huge uh, need. But maybe, maybe if they reduce content in some other, or screen time in some of the other areas, that additional content would be good. Start raid clear system and a three star raid system clear instead of auto. Oh, yeah, that would save a lot of stuff. That's a really good one. Uh, making in game Hulk his actual size. <laughs> That's a very, very important one. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna rate that super high though, because I think there's other game breaking things that I think the community would like overall a little more than just myself. But this is a, this for me, that's an important one. <laughs> making all milestones achievable without paying for the last ones. Oh, this is this is huge. Uh, especially considering what we just had with the Summer of Thunder Milestones event. And I hope 
that this past Summer of Thunder or Milestones were an anomaly, considering all the bugs that they've had with these events and uh, the different things. I, I hope it's an anomaly that they because they gave us all the rewards the first time. I hope they're not going to do that with this next uh, Deathlock event. Uh, removing the war offense, defense, war traits, specifically making them more specific. That would be pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if that's a huge priority, but I, I would like that one. Making all trait specific bonuses active and blitz. I think blitzes are not as important game mode right now. I, I think we could hold off on that one. It would be cool. Like two years ago, this would have been awesome because we didn't have a lot of other game modes. But now that we have other game modes, I'm not sure if that one's super important. Uh, adding Crucible, RTA, Tower, Pocket Dimension to World War Milestones. Tower and Pocket Dimension, what are those? We haven't had those in so long, but uh, that, that could be okay if they bring these back. I don't know if that's a huge priority for me as well. And Alliance-wide daily messages posts for leaders that appear similar to the warning. Uh, for me, I would not see that because I keep all my in-game messages off. So I use Discord. So that one would be huge for me. So I guess for me, auto, let's, let's just actually change this one to the green because this is a pretty good one. Uh, the number one would be three-star raid clear system because this is going to save some time. This is annoying and it will help a lot of the leaders and captains. Uh, so this is a good one as well. Auto rotation of blitz is going to save a lot of time. So I'm going to go with a three-star system, then auto blitz. Uh, but making all of achievements uh, achievable for grinding and not paying, I think that would be number one for me. So one, uh, two, three, and then four. And then the rest uh, are cool. But that, that is where I would rack them up, brother. Are She-Hulk and OG's ISO changing with the update? I think you still use healer on normal Hulk and probably healer with the with the She-Hulk as well. But uh, I guess we're going to have to wait till we could get all those teams in the raids and test them. I haven't built up uh, the rest of my teams. And uh, I mean, uh, excuse me. Are She-Hulks and OG Hulks ISO 8 changing with the update? Uh, I don't think with this update, because we're not going to fully get their team yet. I'm still going to put healer on Hulk and probably healer on She-Hulk as well. So probably not for me, but uh, again, this is not a team that we're going to need yet. Uh, remember, Red Hulk's probably not coming until 6.4, maybe even later than that. But I think 6.4 is when Red Hulk is going to come. So uh, we could wait on building both of these characters right now. But I think their ISO 8 is still going to be healer. That may change once we get Red Hulk in the game and we're actually testing him in some of the uh, war defenses. They're not on the test server yet, but I think it's still going to remain healer. When are we getting another peach meeting from Badendorf, Iowa? What is up, my friend from DFW, Texas? Um, I don't know. Whenever whenever the Nature Boy has time to write one. I, I'm usually really good with editing them and adding stuff to uh, what he has with his general framework. But just starting one from scratch, he's, uh, if, he, if he has time to do that, then uh, we'll definitely do one. But uh, he's he's been working on his own channel and doing a lot of other stuff. So I'm not sure. Hopefully, hopefully the Nature Boy has an answer for us in the questions or in the uh, comments there did they ninja nerf secret avengers they seem to uh, suck a lot lately that's not the new tunes that's a difference for me i think it's been the new tunes but uh it's it's sharon is still i was uh maria's still been fine sharon i've been kind of saving some of her moves there i know she has a lot of focus to get that stun off and some people still use an arena but captain sam has been a big disappointment as far as uh surviving he still does some good stuff with his speed bar manipulation with the ability energy that he gives out but my captain sam dies so early i don't think it's a nerf i think it's just other tunes surpassing him i i do i don't i don't think they had a nerf if they did i i haven't noticed it and i haven't seen any of the other envoys that uh complaining about that so uh not sure but i don't i don't think that he did all right what are some of the new comp team suggestions to beat the new origin challenges? Well, we just beat one of the harder ones this morning on the stream. We used this uh, in the bio section here. We three-starred this difficulty here. Now, I know some people are using symbiotes on this uh, bio difficulty. Uh, four and five for me they did not work on either of them i used my web warriors on difficulty four and it was a challenge to get through it because they don't have all their raid bonuses this was the exact team that i used this morning on stream for difficulty five
five. We tried a few different uh, combinations, tried the symbiotes. I know it worked for some people. It didn't work for me though. We use this combo. I know some people used uh, uh, OG Spider-Man, Spider-Woman was also good for their very early ability block, but this is what I use for the bio challenge. I found the skill was decent. I used my raid team for skill, which is the Secret Avengers, Kestrel, and Shang-Chi. Uh, that made it a lot easier. Uh, and I have a pretty big Shang-Chi. With Mystic, I used Dormammu, and that made it easier. But we got the Eternals, you got Kestrel, you got some good characters there. Uh, if you don't have Dormammu, you still have the Eternals, you still have Kestrel. Should, it should be easier, at least to get you that uh, other difficulty. And then the tech section, we use our tech raid team there as well. Uh, we use Doom, we use Shuri, we use Death Strike, we use Kestrel, so we use, lose a lot of the uh, meta character. I have not gotten through the mutants yet. The Axemen just did not cut it for difficulty five. We got through difficulty four, but I've not, uh, I did not have the time to go back in and try difficulty five. So if you guys have a good team composition for difficulty five, let me know in the comments. But those are what I use to get through those levels. All right, I know you use Amazon coins. I do for as many purchases as I can in the game, except for sometimes they have some good uh, offers on the web store only. But yeah, Amazon coins is my preferred method to buy stuff in Marvel Strike Force. And if you guys want to save up to 20% off, make sure you use Amazon coins for that. If it's available in your region, it's not available in all regions. Uh, but what would be the best values points to spend at a Google Play Store for MSF? Let's go there right now. And as far as uh, what they have for MSF, this is what they have in the store as I'm recording this right now. And there's some decent things, some that I can get, some that I can't. This one is okay, 600 points for there, but I think this one, just the training mats and the ability and the energy that you're getting is uh, the most bang for your buck. If you think of this, the energy that you get, normally you're spending about 50 cores for that. So this is, this is 50 cores, plus you're getting um, some training mats as well. I think it goes a lot further than this other stuff. 300 points for a gold orb does not seem that good. A lot of energy in a mega orb doesn't seem that good. I'd rather have the training mats. And then this elite bundle where you get some uh, red star orbs and things like that. Again, that just does not seem valuable to me. So this cheapest one is the best. Sometimes they have these uh, flash offers that are really good, but most of the time they don't. But this, this, this would be the best one. That would be my choice, my brother. All right. Hey Valley, do the devs ever plan to address the happy RNG? I tried to be a little more filtered there. You see what the actual question said though, Valley Club. RNG from Red Stars. I opened approximately 40 orbs, including two Elite Sixes, three Elite Fives, five Elite five, Fours, and no Deathlock. I haven't unlocked, but can't even be bothered to recruit him. It makes the whole team crap. I will be purchasing the rest of the team. So it's really bad and the availability of these characters going to the store has been very very delayed we haven't had a lot of characters go to these orb exclusive or to the elite store elite store if uh, if you've missed on these and uh you can't really do anything where you're still vertigo promo credit so do they ever i hope so this is this is always being brought up to the devs and we don't really get a lot of comments on this this is this has been a major pain point uh, ever since it was announced back in November of 2018. Just trashy, trashy system with the Red Stars. And even with the reworks, it's still a trashy system. So I hope they will ease up the bottlenecks on these Red Stars because it doesn't feel good. doesn't make me want to spend. doesn't entice me to play the game. It just frustrates me and makes me mad. And I think it does that to a lot of other players as well. So hopefully they address it and they do something a, little, a lot more friendly in these uh in the game how would you feel about making minions into real characters giving them a new ability example making ravager bruiser into taser face or making some shield minions into ancient shield characters thanks for great videos hope you have an awesome week all right that would be fine uh i don't know if i'd be putting any investment into these characters my all my resources right now are going to scourge scourge horsemen teams and teams that could benefit me right now so unless uh ravager bruiser or some of these other characters are going to be uh, some awesome characters. I know Coulson was talked about before he came to the game. Maybe he's one of these minions. Uh, Agent May would be one of the shield minions, we thought. Uh, or, uh, you know, if they would do that, that would be cool. But at this point, with all this bottlenecks that we have and all these characters that we are kind of forced to build at this point, uh, right now in the game, I would not like that. But uh, back in the day, I would have. All right, hey, Valley, long time, my brother. Yes, it is, my friend. Hope you're staying cool in the hot 
Texas, it is hot. I think, but I don't think that's just Texas. I think the world is experiences this heat wave this year. Uh, late entry, but did you catch the early access of the Saga campaign? I believe, no lie, I took advantage, or did you enter anyone else? No, I did not know until uh, until it dropped. We Obviously, we don't know these things in advance because uh, this, it's not a one-to-one -one on the test server. I don't think there's even a test server, uh, a current test server going on right now. But yes, we talked about it early in the video, brother. So uh, if you have not accessed that yet, get your free first-time rewards right now. Well, not free, but you're gonna have to build up the, have those characters built up to do that. But uh, you can get it right now, a few hours before everyone else that's not watching this channel. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a few hours advantage here. And it's just for your first-time rewards. So it's not like you're gonna get a lot of uh, stuff over and over by doing this. Hey Valley, greetings from Singapore. Fun question this week. Which character model in the game do you find the most attractive? I find that mine's is Madeline Pryor. She's smoking hot with all the curves in the right place. All right, so for me, I think I would have to agree with you. It is, it is Madeline Pryor. When I first saw this character model, I was like, oh, that's gonna be a day one buy for me, even though I don't use her in the game. And then when she came out in the game and found that I really had no use for her, I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna buy this character. So we grinded in a blitz. We didn't get very good red stars for her and she's kind of sitting at the low level in the game but as far as uh look she does look the best she's just not very useful uh some other ones that i thought would look pretty good uh were the invisible woman the costume that she had and uh that's the only one that really i remember right now so let me know are what character models do you guys find very attractive in uh marvel strike wars yes what are what pixels do you think look the best in marvel strike force Hey, Valley, fine question. Why does it take so long to certain rewards like Scourge and the month-long Tune event? Other people, other making people wait for a reason now, what do you think of it? I, I, So I think I understand the question that you're asking. I think what you're asking is why does it take longer for some of uh, the rank rewards to come and some are not, like the Blitzes, we get them right away, but the Pestilence Scourge or the month-long event, they take a little while to end. And I think that's because they're looking at cheaters. Uh, ever since it was brought to light that, the, that there's a lot of cheaters in the, a lot of the leaderboard events that I, I I I don't like that the delay is there, but if it means that the cheaters are being removed and people that didn't grind for the rewards are not getting erroneous rewards, I'm okay with that. Obviously, it'd be better if they could uh, fully solve the cheating and uh, give us the rewards right away. But uh, if they can't, then uh, I'm okay with I'm okay with them waiting. But that is why it's it's because they're the cheaters and they're not able to remove some of them right away. So they have to go back after the fact and look for a couple days to make sure that uh, the cheaters are at least most of them removed. Uh, Valley Vine did the unthinkable. People at work started playing and wanted me to join their alliance. My three accounts are at Endgame, so I created another account. So four accounts with three Endgame accounts. How do you have time for that, my friend? How are you, how are you, how are you at work with this when, when it's almost a full-time job for one account for Marvel Strike Force? Start the Discord page, will soon be updating with my progress and what route I am going. Start a new account last Friday. Once it gets going, would love you to check it out. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm currently uh, not in the, in the beginner, in the, early game so i would i would i'm curious to see what it would be to take to go through the early game right now uh eventually started doing youtube but start with discord nice all right so congratulations on that let me know how that goes let me know what you're doing and keep me posted on all, all that so thank you each and every one of you that left a question in the mailbag for this edition of the monday mailbag let me know what you're going to do with this valkyrie event are you going to grind all these blitz and are you going to spend those 25 cores to do that extra arena battle so you can complete those milestones it's not, it's not a lot when you're considering what you're getting for those 25 cores, but it does feel trashy that we have to spend on these arena battles when we previously really haven't had to, or at least in, I'm not remembering when we had to before. Uh, what do you think of the new business model for Scopely? Not allowing us to complete our milestones and not allowing us to purchase the resources we need to complete the milestones on the last day. And uh, let me know if you got early access to the Morgan Le Fay saga, man. Thank you again for everyone that left a question. I will see you guys next time. We're gonna try to get as many videos out this week as normal, but like I said, we are, on vac we are going on vacation later this week. So the schedule may be a little off but we're gonna be fully back to normal next week so have a great week have a great day and i'll see you guys at the top hall fist bump alley flying out